will be all about looking at, uh, as you probably know already, be looking at gargoyles and green men who are, uh, the, gar the green men anyway, are symbols of spring and new life and rebirth, which is something I thought uh, we can all enjoy in the garden and perhaps if we're going out for our daily bit of exercise in the park or wherever we can go. Um, and so I thought it was a really good subject. We could all do with a bit of rebirth and a bit of healing at the moment uh, and the world could do with the same. So um, what I thought is we would have a look at Green Men today. So I will be going through and sharing with you... Um, how to do uh, the basic proportions of the human figure, uh, oh, sorry, of the human face as well, how to divide that up. And we'll also, um, there's also a picture which shows different cross hatching techniques you can use because we're going to be drawing it, drawing this picture today in biro. But you can start off uh, in pencil if you want to. Uh, just to get all the different shapes in. In fact, the video which is on uh, my website, jamiepool.com, jamie-pool.com, uh, shows um, you how to um, roughly draw out the, the gargoyle's shapes. There are lots of shapes on the leaves and the beard and, and so forth that you can draw in um, to begin with, but do it quite loosely and freely. Um, but I will talk about the proportions of the human head um, as we start today. Uh, what I will be doing while you're doing that is I'm going to be looking at how, um, how you can then develop that perhaps a bit further. I'm going to be, I've created a background to work on today using a little bit of newspaper and some tissue paper. So if you've got any tissue paper at home, you can use that uh, and a bit of PVA glue over the top to make a nice hard surface. Uh, and then I just put a little bit of white over it just to give me uh, a nice cleaner, uh, clearer surface to, so I could see my marks and so you could see what I was doing as well. Then I'm going to use acrylics over the top. OK, so uh, enjoy today's lesson and um, please let me know what, how you're getting on. Uh, share your work with me uh, and with everybody else. Um, share the photo that you're using too and we'll have uh, a lot of fun uh, in today's lesson. All right, so uh, see you in a few minutes. Bye. Hello everybody, good morning, welcome back to our lovely art class and a beautiful spring morning as well. I hope everyone's okay. So today we are looking at these beautiful <laughs> faces of uh, green men. So there's what this is the one that I thought I'd have a play around with today. Um, so a few people have asked me to just look at talk very briefly about the proportions of the face. And so yeah, I thought that this is a good idea. This will help us out with um, what we're going to be doing today. Um, so, the proportions of the face. So, this is what I drew this by looking at all the different shapes, obviously with a bit of knowledge about how the proportions of the face go. Um, so, um, what I've done on the back of this one is I've drawn a diagram of how the proportions of the face kind of work. Um, some of the proportions on this are a little bit rough, but um, it will give you a general idea. Now, on the Facebook stream there um, below, you will see there is actually a diagram, and I've put that onto the website as well. 
uh, jamie-pool.com so you can get that there too to help you out so basically this particular diagram and different diagrams use different um, different diagrams use different uh, proportions or ways of measuring the head so there are different ways of doing it and if you go on and search online you will notice this particularly when you look there because lots of different people will use different methods but a really simple way of looking at it is to divide the head into quarters so jet when I drew this portrait of this lovely looking chap what I did was I started off with a basic oval shape so I know that I can fit the head into that particular space or area so do the the oval shape quite loosely to begin with like that and then the first thing I usually do is I look to see where the eyes go so the eyes are usually halfway from top to bottom of the head so from the chin all the way up to the top of the head like that so you divide it into two like this so I'm just doing this by sight you can measure it if you want to and then uh, one way of checking it actually is to use your pencil so you can use your pencil by a bit like the sight uh, comparative method that I showed about three or four weeks ago you can um, you can use your pencil to measure it so here's my finger on my pencil and the top of the pencil so that is about right it's halfway then the next thing to do is divide that again into half and divide the other line below it in half again so you end up with four quarters just like in the diagram then divide the bottom one in half again like that okay and usually actually what I do is I start with a line straight down the middle like that too so that you've got something to measure off when it comes to putting in the eyes the eyes on this one are very big but uh, and that's one mistake um, that a lot of beginners will make when drawing the portrait as well is that the eyes end up being big because it's often the first thing that you look at when you're drawing okay so um, when you draw the eyes in actually you draw them in this case you draw them on the line like this and then in between the eyes is another literally another eyes width like this so you know roughly where to start those eyes off nice and small not too big and a lot of diagrams that show the proportions of the face will also have another space for another eye either side so here and here you'll find there's another space for an eye as well um, but I tend to think that goes off the side a little bit just over here like that okay so it looks a bit weird like that but that's just the way <laughs> that's one way of measuring things out okay now when you're doing when you're drawing the eyeballs or the irises put um, put a bit more shape into it like this so here we've got the eyelid and the iris inside of there usually the iris is covered over by a bit of the eyelid as well like that um, so that then it looks so the person doesn't look like half scared um, because their eyelids uh, have gone so you do that on both sides putting in a little bit more shape as well um, it, at this point if you want to draw a portrait it might be a good idea to um, actually look at your own eyes or use a mirror because that's the really good practice because you've got a good subject that's not going to run off anywhere at that point so we've measured out where the eyes go the eyebrows will go uh, if you draw a line again between this quarter and the eye line then below that is generally where 
below that line through here is where you're going to put your eyebrows but it, uh, it does vary of course between different people this is just a really basic way of understanding where the proportions go so from the edge from the tear ducts if you draw two lines down uh, and then go to the bottom or to the bottom of this section then your nose goes in here a lot of people find the nose really difficult to draw but that's because um, a lot of the nose doesn't have distinctive shapes in the same way that perhaps the eye does um, so what you end up doing is looking for the tones and shadows in the eye in sorry in the nose and if you put those in then you'll start to get the shape of it the 3d structure of it like that okay um, and then just below that if you go inside of the pupils sorry inside of the iris just here and draw two lines down then you'll have the corners of the mouth the opening of the mouth is going to go just above this line here which we drew in earlier okay so you put that line through there and then we've got the cupid's bow above it and again all lips and things vary of course according to who we're talking about and who we're looking at so now i've got my lips and i'm going to then put in uh, where the ears should be so the ears go from this just above this line actually down to the bottom of the nose and again this is a general sort of idea of where those ears are going to be just there and then we can start putting in hair and things which if anyone wants to talk about that at some point we can do that too There we go, so the proportions of the human head. Okay, so look at the diagram. That will give you some ideas about um, where to put things. And also it will help when it comes to drawing, say, the proportions on this as well, on one of these lovely, beautiful gargoyles or uh, green men that we're looking at today. Hi, thanks for saying hi. hello, uh, Karen and Mary and Pat. You're very welcome. I hope everyone can see everything nicely. So um, you'll see this is what I drew in the video and you'll see how I sketched out pretty much like I did this diagram. I sketched out the overall shape of the head. Uh, so that I knew that I would fit it inside of this sized uh, piece of paper uh, with plenty of space around it. And then uh, I put in all the different shapes. And this is a really nice picture to do uh, because it's literally got lots of very clear shapes, which is the nice thing about drawing the gargoyles. If you don't know anything about the proportions of the face, you can still get the shapes. But it's important, of course, to look overall at the overall picture as well as focusing in on the individual shapes you can see in there, too. OK, so um, after I got the basic structure, I knew where the eyes were going to go. I knew where the nose was going to go very much like this. Uh, and I knew where the mouth was go. And then I would uh, if you can see, look at the video, you can see how I've used the pencil to compare different areas against each other so the bottom of the nose say to the bottom of the mouth move the pencil up and it's the same sort of size as the nose or the width here 
same sort of size as the nose and there are lots of surprising similarities in proportions as you draw that you'll notice um, especially after you've done it a few times okay so after that then what I started to do of course is I started to use a biro pen just an ordinary biro pen like this or um, a I'll get my pen hold on or one of these, a uniball pen. These are just really lovely because they're nice and dark. Um, they're not as subtle, I find, as a biro, but they're still a lot of fun to play around with. So if you've got um, different types of pens, just have a, an experiment with them. But if you've only got a biro, don't matter what color it is, just have a little crack with that as well. Um, you'll see online that there's loads of different, uh, well, there's, um, a worksheet that I've just put on there that shows you how all the cross hatching actually works and things. Um, but basically, I've used the. I'll get in a bit closer if I can. So, use the pen to hatch like this, and a lot of you have seen me do this many times. You attend my classes. So lines, that's a hatch. And then to do a nice sh bit of shading, you cross hatch, you go back over the other way and get lighter like that. And then you can go back over it again to get even heavier. And the nice thing about one of these, a biro pen, is that as you use it, you can just scrape the surface and it will make a very light feathery mark which is fantastic for shading. You can get superbly uh, subtle marks with this as I've said many times to people. But you can do the same thing with scribbly marks as well like this. I've done a few little scribbles on my my green man face this one. <laughs> as well. Look at that there. But you'll see on the worksheet there that I've put on that there's lots of different ways and indeed if you type in uh, cross hatching worksheet or examples on Google or whatever you'll see there's loads of these things online and they're brilliant. They get you kind of interested in how, what you can do with these um, marks. So that's a lot of fun. Okay, so um, going on now for a moment, if anyone's got any questions, then please ask about that. So I'm going to put that aside for a minute because I just want to talk about uh, what I'm going to do with this green man. So here is a sheet. You can see I've drawn a little bit of detail just before we came online. Um, so, first of all, what I decided to do today, and this is something I really enjoy doing, is I've created a ground on which to work. So I have used, quite simply, I have used strips of newspaper and covered the whole area, and I've used some tissue paper, like this. Um, so I've made it so that some of the text comes through from the newspaper, but in other cases I've covered it over as well with the uh, tissue. So I've used a little bit of PVA, but if you've got other things um, then you can use that as well. I'll just move that up there and do it here. So the first thing to do is to remember that if you cover everything in glue, leave it to dry in the sun, which is what I did this morning, it will dry ever so quickly. But if you cover it all in glue, the paper that is, then put your newspaper, whatever you're using, down. You'll probably find there's lots of uh, discarded or old uh, paper, maybe some you've had from a delivery from Amazon or whatever. You could use that. As long as it's quite subtle, supple and thin, as soon as you start putting glue on, it will uh, it'll 
laying nice and flat and you might get a nice sort of like you know a little bit of roughness to the surface which is always I find quite interesting to work on so just put your tissue paper down on top of that and then I could put some newspaper and you'll notice that I'm I'm also brushing back over with the glue because what I don't want is any areas that haven't had glue on because bearing in mind how like subtle supple this stuff is if I start working over it heavily with a biro or paint or whatever it's probably going to come up which I find you know a little bit annoying some artists might not and might work with that but for me I like it to be a nice hard surface so yeah you can create a nice ground with that I'll just zoom in a little bit so you can see it a bit closer there we go yeah. now um, as you can see there's a bit of white on there as well so what I did is I used a bit of water and a bit of white um, acrylic so I've got a thin layer of acrylic over that surface um, not too heavy though. I'm not trying to cover it and make it make the background disappear I'm just giving myself a bit of contrast to make it stand out okay uh, and then I used some of the techniques that we've just talked about so I drew a line down the center so I've got the center of my green man just here and then I worked out where the eyes are with another line and then again if you draw in a circle or an oval it's more of a circle in this case uh, then you can put some dividing lines as we did just a few minutes ago on there you all right so I've drawn it out in pencil roughly and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to work into it in biro for a bit so you can see how I'm using biros um, a little bit more uh, and in sort of real time rather than speed it up on my other video and you'll get an idea of uh, how to use the marks and things and then I'm going to start applying some paint in a few minutes as well okay so um, I hope everyone's all right um, please post um, your picture that you're working from it'd be lovely to see what you're doing today if you've used a picture that I've posted or if you've got your own it'd be marvelous um, if you're having trouble finding a picture um, Pinterest is fantastic for finding uh, photos and things it's just really good as soon as you start clicking on things on there you'll find some great things to uh, look at and work from okay what I've got everyone I've just been given a rock cake mm, yummy that is a super rock cake that is so that's what I'll be eating today has anyone else got any snacks that they're eating during this lesson if anyone's got any questions please post and I'll have a look Okay. Mm.
Right. So, um, it's always a good idea to have your photo quite close at hand. And you can see how uh, well you're um, drawing it and things. Don't forget as well as you draw to stand away from what you've done. Just so you can see how you're progressing because it might look great close up but when you stand back you can often see where perhaps things have uh, gone a little bit differently than you expected. Nice to see everybody as well. Hello again David. Nice to see you. Oh and Dominica and good morning Anne and Leslie. Nice to see you as well and Anne Headland. And Mary, hello. And Karen and Pat. I know there's more of you there. That's okay. Right, here we go. So I as I've said last time and a few times before, it's nice to work quite small with things. I'm gonna fold that so everyone can see. I'll zoom in a little bit as well. So that's quite handy look because you can see very closely how the photo and your drawing is going to look. So let's get in a bit. Hope everyone can see that. I don't know where there's a green man um, locally. I think there's one in Higham Ferries, as far as I know. I bet there's one in Rawns. But um, does anyone know or have seen a, a real kind of old sculpture of a green man? It'd be interesting to know. So... I'm trying to match, if I can, the um, the shape of and size of the eye to start me off. I'm using a bit of cross hatching around here, so I don't always go really hard in with the cross hatching straight away, particularly on areas where there's shading. It just helps to map in some of the tone and shadow to get you started. And what's nice about working over a background as well is that you've already got some nice colour to work over. I've done it in a blue because I thought well if I paint it green then it's going to it's going to sh it's going to show up quite clearly and blue and green are often excellent colours to work in together because they're harmonious colours, in other words they they work well and they're next to each other on the colour wheel. So just bringing out, I thought it'd be nice to work into this green man first with a biro so that we can really clearly see everything that I'm I'm doing from the video. So, so as I've said before it's nice to go in with the darker tones to begin with because it really brings everything out. Um, I'm, do, I'm working with a pen knowing that I've you know more or less got the shapes and things already drawn out.
Ah, there's a green man in Leighton Bronze World. Brilliant. Yeah, I've been there. I've been to the pub a few times in Leighton Bronze World. I don't know if it's still there. The other thing I like work reason I work like working on um, a background like this is because of the noise that it makes as well as the pen sort of goes over the um, over the bumps and things on the surface of the paper. It's very it's kind of you know quite satisfying really I find. <laughs> I'm just going to get some of this leafy bit in over here as well. So it's quite dark in there, so I could use this as well, my uni ball. I suppose one of the things, I mean, um, biro pens I find is quite good with water. I don't know about this uni ball. Uh, you know when you add the paint on top so I don't know how well it'll work when I start putting the acrylics on but usually I don't use too much water with the acrylic anyway just need to keep the paint damp as you use it really so I hope that helped Mary because I know Mary um, you were interested in the proportions of the face weren't you so I hope that's um, helped you a little bit there and anyone else who hasn't uh, looked at the proportions of the face too many times before if you've got any questions about that then please ask and I'll see if I can answer them right. so I'm just going to look at this bit around here. Goes up quite a lot. There we go. So one of the nice and help to show the form or the three D effect, if you like. So I'll carry on working on this a bit longer in biro. So you can see how my pen is going in different directions to apply the cross hatching, but I'm building up layers and layers of lines to help um, create that texture and that tone and shadow. So let's see if I can get some of this, this nose in next. Careful I don't make it too big. So as I was saying, the nose, for a lot of uh, people who don't do them very often, the nose is a bit more of a challenge because it involves shading to create the form rather than nice outlines and things. It's useful actually when you're drawing is to look at things in terms of light and shadow as opposed to edges and shape, um, shapes. Well you need to look at shapes but I mean uh, when it well when it comes to the nose you understand what I mean. There we go. Okay, a bit more around here now, a bit darker here, and then you've got the eyebrow just above, which is just a little bit lighter. If I do make any mistakes with tone and shadow, I can always correct those when I use paint on top. i just zoom out a bit again, because you couldn't actually see what I was doing, could you? 
There we go. Yeah, that was uh, that was Scout barking back there. <laughs> My lovely dog. Oh, good. I'm glad you did a practice face, um, Mary. It does help just to loosen you up, actually, you know, and get you thinking about how things are going to fit together when you're doing your um, green man. Yeah, so yeah, often the eyes as well, um, they're the first thing really that um, can happen is, is your eyes can get a little bit too big. Um, that's quite normal is for that to happen when you start out, but they're quite easy to correct, particularly if you're at the beginning. So it, it actually encourages you to keep comparing the different spaces between and the different shapes between each other. So you can get more accuracy in things. So we've got this line that sweeps up into that leaf that comes out of his nose. <clears throat> so the bridge of the nose and the front of the nose just there is often the bit where the most light is coming to. The light in this case is more coming from um, our, our right side and hitting the nose across here. So I can see there's a bit more shadow around this side, so I'm just gently putting that in. And I'm going to move down next to his kind of leafy beard. And mouth. So if you, I mean, even if you only get the basic shapes in of your green man to begin with, um, I'm I'm looking in more detail because I kind of feel like I've drawn out, you know, what I need to. I'm looking in more detail now at the the smaller shapes. So I'm looking at the shape of the the lips just here, and I'm looking at the shape as well of the top lip just here and how that helps me to work out what comes next like you know the lip the, the above the lip the the leafy bit on the lip there we go and there's nothing wrong of course with going back and just doing a little bit more work in other areas as you go put a little bit of shadow in there so I'm going to go I'm going to do this kind of half of the face I think and then what I'll do is I shall start trying a bit of paint on top as well and we'll see what happens there so as you can see not only, only have I built up layers of uh, line I've also built up layers of paper underneath so it really makes for quite a, a much more interesting picture uh, when you've got texture you've got line you've got tone and shadow and of course color 
and space as well so space around the outside spaces inside so these are all things um, that um, are just known as the, f the formal elements in art and there, there, there's more information on that online of course but once you understand how all these things can work together through practice and time it can be uh, you know a lot of fun to com just experiment really and combine these things in in different ways that you haven't tried before so the top lip has usually got a bit more shadow on it just because the light normally and this is outside I think this photo the light normally is coming from above and from you know depending where the sun is so as you're working if you're thinking about those things too it can help you get the tones and shadows and shading and all that sort of stuff a bit closer so I can also add in little nicks and dents in the I don't think this is made of stone <laughs> but we'll say it's stone and then there's this kind of loopy thing just under his lip I'm going to stick that in it's a little line there's a bit of shadow inside of that line under his lips a lovely scratching noise on there as well hiya Tracy right I'm going to stick this big leafy shape in another loopy bit underneath where the leaves meet each other like this and then obviously there's a bit of tone and shadow in there too so you can see as well I mean um, how from from creating this background you can also add a little bit of white just to bring bring things uh, to flatten off the area a little bit add a bit more contrast between your pen and your um, your background works quite nicely and age your drawing. I mean you can do it in pencil if you wanted to, you could do it all in pencil onto a background as well but um, you know again it's just about that layering idea of trying out different things on top of each other. This is a technique I've used a few times but because I do a collage quite a lot with my portraits and things There's a line etched into that part of the leaf there. And another sort of rough bit here as well. And then we need to get darker under that bottom lip. So we can bring it out. So, you know, contrast is a great thing to help things really stand out against each other. to do but
quite enjoying doing that actually. A bit more rock cake. Mmm, yummy. going to work around this area perhaps the top of the head as well mind you I think a bit of his head's actually missing because um, take the bottom of the chin or roughly around there take your pen up the top his head would be in here somewhere so the proportions aren't necessarily correct but these bits are inside but it is a design as opposed to a as opposed to um, a realistic interpretation of a face right okay so I'm gonna put this one in next Here. This area is really dark, so I'll put that in next. As soon as you get those dark bits in, you can really start to see the form appear. Tones and shadows. That's when I think it gets, you know, gets a bit more exciting. This bit here is a bit wide. Just gonna bring that in a little bit. I like your um, green man and thanks for posting it. Hi Govinda, are you at work today as well? So you know in the background here I'm also putting in so we've got the leaf and then we've got the shadow underneath the leaf, which is quite a nice way to lift, start lifting the picture out or the image out of the background a little bit more. Two. Some of the tissues come up a bit, but I'm not worried about it too much. lighter marks to 
extend the shading out more lightly as well. And we're going to add some highlights in, I think, to start with. I'm going to use probably a pale green for the highlights, and then on top of that, use a pure white when I get to it. Right, this leaf is, comes out just here, quite away from here, and I've not done that so far, so I'm going to move that, use this as a marker. So I can see more or less how far that part of the leaf is going to come out. And then this one from the end of that leaf goes up here somewhere. So I'm going to bring that out a bit further too and up a bit higher. My interpretation. There we go. On your break again, <laughs> Govinda. Thanks everyone as well for posting all your cakes. Some absolutely gorgeous looking cakes um, this last week. Really good fun doing them and eating them. <laughs> Julie good to see you or hear from you <laughs> I hope you're doing well sort of bit of shadow over the whole area of the eye just to send it right into. Hi Lynette, good to see you. Now, if you can't print a picture off, I was going to say, uh, if you can't print a picture off of Green Man, you can use, of course, your telephone or your computer screen to draw from. It ju works just as well. I have a lot of students do that at school. So if you've missed any of the video this morning, don't forget I'll be posting it again. Well, you can watch this again anytime after it's been broadcast, I think, on here on Facebook. But I also leave it on um, my website for everybody to access, along with all the other bits and bobs that I put on there. Okay, yeah, Govinda, if um, when you've got a chance, if you post a picture or send me a picture of your your work, um, then I'll have a look at it. You can use Facebook and message me on there if you want to. Use Messenger. I'll be happy to have a look at whatever you've done. Try and get a few different shots of it, you know, close up and uh, perhaps a bit further away so that I can... Um, I can have a look at it, get a bit as much information as I can. Some photos are hard to to see the detail and things. But I'll be glad to have a look at anyone's work and give some help. Right. 
good fun. I've enjoyed this. Just do a bit more around here. There we go. It goes down to the middle. We've got that line going up the centre there. Mmm, yummy. Right. And we'll just put a little bit on that eye actually. Just fancy doing that before I get the paint. Thanks, Govinda. Yeah, send me a message and uh, I'll have a look through it. How are you? find that once you've been drawing something for a little while like we've been doing just here with this you get into kind of a rhythm and you know you may have a little bit of a slower cautious start but once you get going you get into a rhythm and you can kind of go for it really I suppose and enjoy it Green man. leaves a bit bigger and I drew out um, when I drew it before just try and change alter the shape of it a little bit sometimes it's nice to measure that you can use the features to help you measure off other parts of the um, the portrait as well so um, just here for example this this shape on the leaf here can be measured off against the nose so if you if you went straight across there like that you can see that it kind of it should be about level with the nose area just above the bottom of the nostrils so this bit which is here should line up with the nose more or less around like that so even you know if you've drawn it out don't stop measuring keep measuring all of the time because it's really going to help you you know just improve the accuracy as you go along really so just keep working on that as you can see I'm doing here 
changing things as I go along just to improve them and make them look a bit nicer. Okay. So generally that area just under the mouth is a bit darker, so I'm just adding some general tone over larger areas just to sort of send them back that little area that plane of tone and shadow he's sending back to bring those lips forward a little bit and then those leaves they come out from under the lips and then they come they sort of curve they curve outwards from there so this area in the middle is highlighted just here and this area is generally a bit darker than say these around here hi prima ah oh, it's lovely to see you here You've painted the green man, but in blue paint. I haven't taken its pick. It is in the UK. Oh, OK. <laughs> well, um, perhaps try a different colour this time. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> it's nice to see you're here anyway. I hope you're having a go too, a drawing. I know you say you haven't got many materials at the moment, but pencil or pens just just as good if you can get hold of one of those. Right, try a little bit of paint now. So I'm kind of, because I've put dark shadows in already, I'm kind of really interested in putting in some highlights using um, some white acrylic and perhaps a bit of this colour, a bit of leaf green. There, so I put a bit of that on my palette. Sorry, my palette's a bit dirty. I haven't cleaned them since we did the classes yet. So a little bit of water, touch of green. And I think I'll get a nice thin round brush. These brushes aren't numbered, but it doesn't matter. So a nice small brush. And we'll zoom in a little bit more as well. Perhaps so you can just see what I'm going to be doing. Just get that out of the way. So, one of the things I love doing is the eyes, so I'm going to start with the eyes first. I may need some darker tones in a bit, but let's just have a little play around here. So, I'm going to do them in green. I just started in the old white, uh, in the blue, sorry, in the newspaper. I'm just going to put some highlights in just to see what happens. And then oh, I should bring in some other colours in a bit, or some other greens sooner, probably. Only 
where there's a really light area I'm just going to put in a few little areas of white and stuff there's his eyebrow lines it's here May just paint in the eye area to begin with. There we go. So it's nice to have that bit of contrast between the light and the dark areas. I'll do his nose and I'll blend that in a little bit. So I'm just trying to illustrate how these highlights can help things start to stand out a bit and then I'm going to blend through a little bit more in a bit so I'm working quite um, before when I've painted on one of these classes I've said just do one small area at a time so that kind of goes against this a little bit because I'm just putting in random highlights and things so sometimes the way you work changes a bit but that's okay I think you know people pick up the paints and different materials and use them differently in different circumstances or because they just work differently but already these highlights, I think, are starting to pick out some of those details. Hi Sonia, hello Davina, hi Fran, good to see you. Now for some of the darker tones in my green man there I'm going to use some burnt umber and I thought it'd be nice to use a bit of violet because green and purples are good harmonious colours so this kind of violet-y colour would be really nice to put in and work back over some of the darker areas so I'm just going to mix some of that up now Try a bit of that. There we go. Keep the picture to hand. And then I shall start blending in some of these bits. I want to keep the vitality of the green as well to make it look fresh and fun and stuff or spring like I should say <laughs> too much water with the paint it's good to have a J cloth handy just you know if you dip your water if you dip your brush in the water just to sort of take off some of the excess color is really good oh, sorry water So now I'm just, I'm actually mixing the colour a little bit on the surface of the page or paper. 
Um, sometimes it's quite nice to do that because what you end up doing of course is doing the blending while the paint's wet on the surface. I think I need a bit of a yellow in here as well. While the paint's wet, put some of the highlights back in. Keep an eye where these shadows actually are and these highlights actually are, it's important. So you don't kind of paint in things that aren't actually in there. So that's looking good. <clears throat> See what I'm doing. So I'm going back over my painting, back over all of my um, pen work that I just did. Um, but you, I mean, of course, you can if you like some of the pen work or you want to enhance your picture with a bit of pen work later, then you can go back over it again, of course, or you could leave some areas exposed. In other words, not painting them. So it's worth, you know, even if you're not sure if it's going to work, it's some, sometimes just worth in the process of doing things. Just try it out, see what happens. The nice thing about using these acrylics and things is that you can, of course, go back over stuff. You could even paint the whole thing, then go back over the whole thing in um, in pen, which is also another way, a nice way of working. So getting into the realms of mixed media. Put a bit more yellow in this too. Not too much I think.
The other thing is you can use the paint, the acrylics, uh, in a slightly watered down version if you want the, the pen marks to come through. I've just noticed that on the work that I'm doing at the moment here. There's a little bit more water on my brush at different points so it means that I can still see through to some of the pen marks if that's the effect that you want of course. You might find yourself doing that anyway which is a nice way to sort of discover a slightly variation a slight variation on the technique you've been doing. So that violet colour that I mentioned earlier actually creates, mixed with the green and the white, does create almost like a, a grey as well. So it kind of reflects a little bit of that stony effect I suppose that we've been, that we're talking about. Tiny bit of the yellow in there as well. And again, I talked about when I did my demonstration video of the gargoyle, uh, sometimes you can also decide to exaggerate um, tones and things as well in order to make the image um, pop a little bit more out of the, the surface.
think it's Chichi. Is it Chichi College has got one? Over in Rushton. Uh, sorry, High and Ferries. I can cover a bit more ground. Change my brush. <clears throat> so I'm going to apply a bit more of a wash, I think. Well, not a wash, but just a thinner lay, layer of colour over one of the leaves so I can rework it. So I've got this kind of white colour here. So if you remember at the beginning, I talked about using thinner layers of colour um, to have something to work on when you're doing the drawing. You can also do the same thing using thinner layers of paint for different parts of your picture. So I'm going to map in. some of this leaf a bit more. Hi Chloe, good to see you. Are you having a go today at this? Hi Tansy, if you, everyone's just tuned in you can um, watch a video of me doing this, the, a, a drawing of Green Man looks like this I don't know how long everybody's been here you see so but if you go to jamiepool.com to the art lesson the online art lesson all the information is on there if you need to have a quick look at the video of what we've been doing download a picture of a green man or use your phone to work from so I've now put in a thinner layer of colour and that just enables me to see through a little bit the marks that I've done whilst also adding a light layer of colour in here. Good, having a go. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> Chloe? That's it, it takes a bit of um, practice and perseverance sometimes. But the more of it you do, the better you will get. Guaranteed. Like most things, I suppose. And in the meantime, have a bit of fun and relax, I suppose. So, I've put over this wash of colour onto his face. I can still see some of the biro through. But it gives me kind of a new colour to sort of work back into. And it's quite satisfying to see all the layers of colour going over the top. So from going and working quite tight and small around that eye area, I've now gone working a little bit more broadly. So that I can start to bring out some of the contrast between... Um, the eye area which is quite dark or darker and the the lighter areas of the leaves coming out of our lovely green man so I haven't drawn that in so I'm just going to do that quite roughly up there now the other thing is which is quite interesting is that because I put green down sorry blue down in tissue some of the blue is mixing with some of the yellowy greens that I put down over the top so you get new blues and greens that I perhaps wasn't expecting before or I could have been expecting if I'd thought about it but it's quite pleasing and it also just gives the image a little bit more uh, richness as well 
There we go, he's starting to appear now. I'm going to put a little bit more yellow on his around his eye area just to make that look a bit more vibrant. So this is again almost like a little mini glaze back over there. I will post a picture of this um, a bit later so you can see it in a bit more detail and things because I know that my camera, whereas it's brilliant, it, it's not the highest quality. I see you know getting a webcam or something but everything takes ages at the moment doesn't it. So. Ah Tiana. Oh, you made um, clay green men in your art class last spring. We'll definitely do one. I've started drawing green lady. Brilliant. This morning working as well, so. We'll follow up with the drawing later. Lovely, thank you. Hi Sharon. Thanks uh, Tiana as well. Yeah, as I said, this video, all these videos are available on my website. Um, but you can uh, always come back to this live stream and watch it later. It's quite a long one, isn't it? But, you know, you're welcome to come back, of course. Right, so I'll put a bit more colour over the whole of the leaves, uh, on this area anyway, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to work back into it again with my smaller brush at a slower pace. Adding, so even though this is highlighted in a sense because it's lighter, I'm going to add extra highlights into it to really bring forward different areas that you can see on there. So here we go. Gonna get white, a bit of green, a touch of yellow, but mostly white. I'm using a very small round brush at the moment. I might switch in a little while. So now I can spend a bit more time adding in highlights. on top of my green which I just mixed and put over the top of the leaves to show contrast between the eye area. So I'm just putting in this little loop that goes around the leafy area. And I'm going to go darker just in here. line appears. A bit more of a vibrant green in there. sure if, if a green green men are, are Celtic in origin or even further back. Don't know if anyone knows. I think they're Celtic aren't they? Probably related to Pan. So I've just used a bit of brown in there to darken this area a bit further. Ooh, a bit too much water. and a bit of violet and then when that's dry because it isn't quite the right colour what I'll do is I'll go back over it with a bit of green so 
So the brown that I used was burnt umber, mixed with a bit of the violet and a bit of a touch of green. You get quite a greyish sort of colour from that, but that's what I'm trying to get through is a little bit of this kind of stony effect as well as the green, a nice green in the leaves. So I'm using a bit more of the old pure violet in here. So I love how green and purple and or this in this case like this violet colour looks together. They're lovely colours next to each other. I'm just gonna put you can't I don't know how well you can see it on there. The colours are a bit more vivid. So sometimes it's nice to ha have little um, hints or highlights or accents of colour to make the image feel a bit richer and more interesting. Which is, I think that does quite nicely. Right, I'm going to get stuck into that bottom leaf around the eye now. It's kind of yellowy. What yellow have I been using? I don't know. Um, it 
cut me in. That's what I thought it was. So applying the paint a bit thicker now. I'm aware of my line that I put in in grey earlier. So the little edges of the leaves on this have got a little highlight on. So I'm putting this quite light. Colour in, just a nice, nice yellowy colour, white and yellow around there. I might do a bit around here as well, and then I'm going to use a much paler, almost white colour to get the shape, the edge of the um, the, the leaf or the stone. And the nice thing is when you know when you look closely at paintings whether wherever they are in galleries or whatever and you you actually see them in the flesh that you you notice so much more so I'm just looking closely at some of the bits that I've done on here and uh, you know you can just see a little bit of newspaper poking through which is is quite you know it's enjoyable just looking there's one of the things that David Hockney always talks about, one of my favourite artists, is how he just loves looking at the world. And art, you know, is, is just about, it's about doing that, isn't it? It's about looking at things. And the, just the pleasure of looking, that's it. I'm now putting in let's see if I can zoom in a bit more and I'm just going to put in a little bit of a highlight around the edge I can use like dabs and stipples as well rather than just a clean line to make it feel a bit more textured as well. Sometimes you'll find if you've got enough water, if you've got water in your paint, the paint does, it looks great when you put it on, but the water actually makes it fade out a little bit. So it's, you often find yourself going back over little bits and bobs.
Oops, there you go, dip my brush in the tea. Classic one that. Sometimes I like to dab painted areas while they're wet with my finger because it just softens some of the brush strokes a little bit if you want them softening. Oops. Right, see if we can do it a little bit on the nose. Quite enjoying doing this. Hope everybody's enjoying it. So, a bit on the nose. So that's where all the blending and the shadows come in. So don't forget, you can always change it and work back over it if you're not happy, if it doesn't look right. But where possible, just enjoy the process of bringing those things forward and out of the picture. So I'm putting in some lighter colour right next to where I've just put the dark in and then blend it through by bringing those two wet areas together and then I'll go extra dark where the actual nostrils are I'm using a bit of the violet in there and in that little gap in between his just above his cupid's bow and a nice dark bit around the side of his nostrils Again, as you're working on this, keep checking the shapes off against each other, like I just uh, wrote to Nell. And don't forget to stand back, stand away from your work. You know, quite away from it. One of the little tricks that we sometimes do in the art classes is we take a photo of it, 
where I'd come around and take photos and then you can see your photo from quite a long way off straight away on your phone it's very effective for just seeing how things are going so try that too everybody always says oh it looks better from a photograph from a distance and that's because you're looking at it on a photograph anyway you're looking at it from further away so you can get an impression of the overall picture quite quickly and it you know makes you feel a bit better makes you feel a bit more confident about how things are going right bring in a bit of green over here touch of the violet so that the green doesn't come become too dominating I found that with this using a bit of the violet in there you can use a purple or something like that but using a bit of purple with the greens and the whites softens the colour down so it just doesn't bounce out of the whole picture too much And layering the, the violet on top of the greens mixes those colours as well, you know, when the greens are dry and things.
Okay, see you later, Chloe. Thanks for coming. So I'm just working generally over the picture at the moment just to get a bit more of the colour on and the shape of the leaves. So what I'm doing, I've put this kind of yellowy green over the top but then I'm using bits of white to show where the edges and the planes are the shapes or the the shapes of the leaves come forward or go back so I'm doing that just using a little bit of white really over the top and if that white's a bit harsh of course I can always go back to it later and soften it down by doing like a, like a thin bit of colour back over the top and that covers quite a bit of area in quite a quick time I just like taking my time with things mostly but It still works pretty good. It's stippling on the nose. All right, Jill, good to see you. So the pen being underneath there does actually add a little bit of tone and shadow without me having to even paint it in, of course. So the layering effect is, you know, with the pen and the paint back over the top is very effective and very convenient way of working when it comes to painting back over. And it's just, like I said, it's just interesting to see how these things actually work when you, when you do them.
Thank you so much, Leslie. Yep, see you next week. Have a good one. Enjoy the weather. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Oh, David, I just saw yours. Thanks for sharing it. Um, and yeah, you can try watercolour back over the top of a, a biro picture, which is what I was thinking of doing with this one, actually. But um, just use whatever you've got. If you, I mean, if you don't have acrylics, just use, try a bit of watercolour and things. Whatever it is, just have a bit of fun, really, and, uh, and everything. But um, thank you so much for coming today, everybody. I've really enjoyed working with you again. Um, I'll just turn my camera around. Hello. Um, yes, so thank you for coming again uh, to our, our lesson. Um, and uh, so we'll do, we'll do something else next week, perhaps. If anyone's got any ideas, that would be great to hear from you about that. Um, I'm happy to accommodate anyone's ideas or thoughts about what they'd like to do. Um, otherwise, I'll just uh, come up with an idea myself. But thank you so much for coming. It's a great thing. It's a really enjoyable thing for me to do. And, um, and it's a